3.6, applications of exponential models. Uh, in example one, we are given a table that shows the average weekly earnings over a five-year period. Rounded to the nearest dollar, we need to construct a exponential function to model the situation. So a couple of things uh, that we need, first of all, is the base form of an exponential function. Okay, we have a base uh, to an exponent, this is the power, and then we have an initial amount, right? So from here, we're counting the years starting at 2002. So 2002 is our starting amount, and then the years after that would be year one, year two, year three, year four. But we need this base, which is the growth factor. Uh, we can see the earnings are going up. But how do I determine what my growth factor is just based on this table of values? You do the subtracting. The first differences. So we're thinking about finite differences, first differences, second differences. So remember, if the first difference is constant, then the function is <laughs> linear. linear. If the second difference is constant, then the function is quadratic. So those aren't going to help. How do I deal with a quadratic? Why is this helpful? It's not first differences. I'm not going to have a constant first difference. I'm going to have a con constant Factors. Ratio, ratio of successive, successive yeah. terms. Thanks very much. So this is a real, real world situation. So our base, our uh, growth factor is going to be an approximation, but we're going to get it by taking the ratio of successive terms and then taking the average of those terms. Okay, so we have uh, we can get a, we can get a few ratios here. We can get six eighty eight over six seventy nine. We can get seven o two over six eighty eight. We can get seven twenty five over seven o two. And we can get 747 over 725. Go ahead and punch each of those into your calculator and jot down the approximation. This is going to get us an approximation of a growth factor of a base that will allow us to model this situation using an exponential function. We're doing it all of these times because we're not building a graph based on an, on an equation. We're building an equation based on real world data. Well, the real world data isn't going to perfectly fit an equation. It's gonna be modeled by, the equation is gonna approximate. So we're gonna get all of the different, these are all gonna be slightly different, although really close to the same. And then from that, we're gonna choose an average to be our, our growth factor. Okay, what did we get for our first uh, ratio? 1.0, uh, 1.0, Next one. 1.0, Next one. 1.0, Next one. 1.0, Okay, so now we've taken four of the ratios, four successive ratios. They're really close to the same. They're all hovering in between 1.01 .01 and 1.033, okay? Um, but in order to get really accurate, all we would really need to do is take an average of all of these, okay? So the average of these, the average ratio, says we're going to add them all up. So 1.013 plus 1.02 plus 1.033 plus... 1 .033 plus 1.03, and we're going to divide them by the number of ratios used, which is 4. Okay. So you so should have gotten 1.024. That makes this a good approximation to use for our base, our growth factor. That means from year to year, on average, you're multiplying by 1.024. 0.024 in order to get the next term, okay? So that's going to be our repeated factor. Now, the only other piece that we're missing is A, okay? So maybe I'll make a little note here. This was to find B, 
and now to find a. Well, what is a? Like in this equation, what has a always stood for? Like Not in an exponential uh, in an exponential model. Um, do you remember when we used this formula? Amount equals a naught times uh, the half-life factor or growth factor to over time to the power of t. I do what is this? This is the initial, amount. initial amount. So this is actually the exact same formula. Y is a. B is your base. The exponent is there. A naught initial amount. A in this case initial population. Well, what is our initial population? Thank you. And what is X? Five. What does X represent? Years. Yeah, years after 2002. So the year 2003 is year one. Does that make sense? So taking all that information, we can get a formula for the population to help us predict population. And we're going to use capital P for population. Oh no, sorry, this is not population at all. I don't know why I'm switching to population. It's earnings. So the amount of money earned uh, weekly from year to year, you multiply by this ratio. Okay, earnings. So earnings with respect to time, which is measured in years, is our initial earnings. I'll erase that word population. I don't know where that came from. Initial earning of 679 times 1.024 to the power of t. Okay, and that came right from the work that we did. We found our ratios of successive terms. We took the average to find uh, a ratio that would model the growth. And then we started, we had our initial earnings, which is 679, and then we're counting the years from 2002. Okay, so if you put a zero in here, you'll get the earnings in 2002. If you put a one here, you'll get the earnings from 2003. If you put a two here, you'll get the approximate earnings from 2004, so on and so forth. Yes, that was A. Part B of that problem says predict the average Canadian's weekly earning in 2010. So 2010 is not part of our chart. Um, so we need to figure out which year after 2002 is 2010. So in order to figure out what T is for that situation, we're just going to take our 2010 and subtract 2002, right? The difference between 2010 and 2002 will be the number of years passed since 2002. If that makes sense, the number of years passed since 2002 uh, will get us to 2010, and that's going to be eight years. So now what do we do with that value of eight? Yeah, we sub it into our equation for our earnings. We're now finding E at eight, which is 679 times 1.024 to the power of eight. Now, when you're doing this in your calculator, please be mindful of the order of operations. You're going to do the exponent first. Now, if you typed it into your calculator like this, your calculator would do a good job. It knows what to do. Just to be sure, I typically will go 1.024 to the power of 8, enter, times 679, enter. And what do you get? 820.86. You get approximately 821. We're not going to use, why aren't we using uh, decimals here? You could. It's just none of the other data is given using cents. It's all given using dollars. So in 2010, based on this information, you can assume that the average weekly earning for a Canadian in 2010 was approximately $820. Okay. 
Uh, let's write a little sentence, a little statement. This model predicts that the average weekly income of Canadians in 2010 is about $820. In C, we need to predict when the average Canadian might expect to earn $1,000 per week. So for C, we're, we want the earnings, the average earnings per week to be $1,000. So we're going to put in $1,000 there. We don't know what T is. That's what we want to find out. How many years will pass before the average earnings will be $1,000 per week? So I'm going to just simplify this, try to isolate T as best we can. What I can do is I can divide both sides by 679. So on the right, I'm left with 1.024 to the power of t. And on the left, we have 1,000 divided by 679, which is 1.47, 1.473, if we want to round to three decimal places. And now you're in that situation where you have to kind of do a little bit of a guess and check, uh, try a couple. So I might say, let's try... Maybe t equals 20. It, I did 21 because I wanted to see what it was. So we tried uh, t of 21 and we got 1,069. Yeah, I didn't do that. I didn't see that one. So that's a little bit high. So let's see if we can come down. Let's see uh, if we can maybe 19. What are you times it by? 1.024 to the power of 19. So when we put in 21 in this equation, we get 1.646. Okay, so that's a little bit high. So we're trying 19 and we got 1.564. One Still too high. I did 18. I would do 20. 1.532. Still too high. Let's try 16. One point four six one. Ooh. So that probably means that 17 would be good because we want to get over this, right? We want to get over $1,000. So in the 17th year after 2002, this model predicts that the average earnings uh, per week for a Canadian will be over a thousand dollars. Okay, so if we take what we found out, it's T years from 2002. So you got 2002 plus 17 years. So in 2019, we should have cracked a thousand dollars per week. Okay, example two we just did on Desmos. It was pretty straightforward. Uh, we plotted the values. And then in Desmos, we put a y equals a b to the power of x. We added a slider for a and we added a slider for b. We found out that a of 1500 and b of 0 0.8 made this uh, line up really nicely. And it gave us an initial value of 1500 bucks for that computer, which is what A ends up being. Uh, and our, our curve fit it perfectly, our exponential model, with Y equals 1500 times 0 0.8 to the power of T, I guess, where T is the years uh, after purchase. Our question says it's N, N years after purchase. So the likely purchase price then is $1,500. Practice problems for this come from page 207, numbers 1 through 4, 8, and 9.